Well, how about that? Man, oh man, that just took it. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Do we need the net? He's coming to the bank. What's he doing? Is it a little guy? No. Holy cow. No. Keep that in the hook. No. <laughs> wow. Oh. That's a good one. Now that's eating right there. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go. Look at there. We're back with Rick Hill. Years ago, we did a show with him. You remember he had a cool Willie's Jeep. We were fishing for catfish and you were raising asparagus, which I saw the asparagus patch on the way in. Now that was back in the early 70s. And you're, you're, <laughs> your place is in the Ozark Mountains, deep <laughs> hid in a private place. We can't tell anybody, we have to kill them, That's right? right, it's a long and way. we don't want to oh, kill it's... anybody. You are the old fashioned aquaculturist. Very simply, you've got a pond here. What, how many acres? A couple acres? It's just an acre. That's an acre. It just looks it bigger. It seems bigger. Uh -huh. Full of fish. But yeah, I have fish in both ponds. Protein. Oh, absolutely. Good, clean protein. Oh, absolutely. Now, being that this is your pond, it's just runoff. It's good, right. clean water. You're not it's spraying It's mostly anything. a wooded watershed. We've got 62 acres, and about half of it feeds into these two. Now, let's talk about the fact that even if you have a small place, like an acre, you probably have enough protein in there if, if, if things got bad and the world got hit by a huge comet. Well, <laughs> you could feed your family for a long period of time. Well, until, until we vaporize. Well, don't vaporize, <laughs> just don't vaporize. <laughs> but you have, now this is not something you see every day. Hold this, hold this beautiful specimen up here. What is that? It's a blue cat. Now, how can you tell the difference between the channel cat? The anal fin on the blue cat is longer, has more rays, and is more like a barber's comb where it's a shorter and a little more con convex. Of course, I look at the colors and whatnot, and they always have a more purplish gray color to me. Small channel cats is what mostly are, are in the pond, and they're the easiest to raise. I just experimented through a few of these in a long time ago. Now, if I didn't uh, know any better, you sound like you have been around fish. I mean, how in the world could that be? You sound to me like you've been around fish a long time. You know, I knew this guy one time. He used to draw pictures of fish all the time. He even had something called the, the Fishes of Kentucky. Yeah, oh yeah. I wish I could have met that guy. He seemed like a cool guy. But his name was Hill, too. Wait a minute. That's amazing. You cool. could not be the same like, guy, could you? It could be an amazing coincidence. <laughs> you know what? You and I started hanging out together by accident years ago. I showed up in Frankfurt at this job, this amazing job, where yep. we, got to, we, we got to go around and shock fish and do all these amazing things. We, we started in fisheries. That's right. You later became the artist for the magazine right and have done artwork not only here but I mean you've done artwork for uh, for saltwater fishes you do carvings right. amazing stuff yeah I did fish carvings for years for and a gallery in Palm Beach Florida did saltwater amazing sport fish. beautiful yeah. stuff you could have been Thanks. her Ernest Hemingway at one time Some, somebody <laughs> wanted to set you up in the keys I still I still got a question that uh, it's <laughs> true but. but you still work for the department to do the artwork up there I took over as host Right. About the same time as you as you took over as department artist back in the, whenever it was. Long time ago. A long time ago. Mm -hmm. Then you retired to this beautiful Ozark Mountain Re Resort. <laughs> Not. <laughs> so you have an existing body of water that's an acre, half acre. Or you just want to have somebody come in with a bulldozer and, you know, of course you have to make sure it'll hold water. Well, what you, would you recommend? It's a good source of food and sport and just fun. And it's a good way to introduce kids to fishing. If you've got property, I don't always think it's a good idea. Of course, you got to check to make sure your land is suitable for a pond. Mm -hmm. I think on your farm, you looked into it and they told you the extension service that it might not be a good I'm idea. I'm the king of sinkholes. Sinkholes. If you got a lot of sinkholes, it's, they, they probably won't hold water. So you talk to your extension agent, talk to neighbors around, see how their ponds hold. If you've got a suitable spot, it's a great addition to a farm. It's a, it's a real asset to have. There are places where you can actually, uh, all around Kentucky, there are fish trucks. It all has to be private now for farm ponds. That there's ha several hatcheries that uh, supply the state with fish, and gotcha. they go to farm stores quite often uh, with the like the fish truck, and you can come and buy what you want. You know, I remember the old days. Doc was talking about a buddy went way back in the day. Right. He used to talk about them coming on trains. Yeah. 
back during the Depression. They, yeah. they would help people get their little farm started. Yeah, and the fish would be in milk cans, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You can feed the fish if you want to. It's fun because the kids can watch them, and you can put some weight on those catfish really fast. They that's an amateur form of aquaculture, yeah. and it's just a lot of fun. All the farm stores sell fish food, floating fish food, and uh, that way you can see your fish and they grow faster. The bluegills will start coming to it as well. All right, this is to me is the perfect size catfish for consumption. What would he weigh? Four pounds, three, four pounds? Well, we can look and see. He's about eight. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. I tend to underestimate because I used to get a lot of pictures. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a nice fish. It's solid. Can you pretty much count on coming up here and getting dinner? Pretty much. Pretty much? Yeah. You got them trained. Yeah. Well, not trained. I'm but... just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, let me tell you what. Is, is this a possibility that I, that I could take this home and, and work on my batter? Absolutely. I like your thinking. Now, you're going to be my guinea pig now, right? First, you got to let me clean it for you. Oh! <laughs> twist my I don't arm. <laughs> I didn't think I'd have to twist very hard. <laughs> Just pretty much the same as filleting a bass or anything. Go right down, pectoral fin, boom, down the back, cut right. out the rib cage, nothing to it. Basically the same. Filleting a scaled fish is a little easier Yeah. when it comes to removing the skin. Holds up that outside. Yes, but it's still doable. All right, so I can do it. So you're going to be the guinea pig. You and Gina are going to try a couple, see what you like. Sounds good. Thank you, dude. You're welcome. I like to go fishing. Yeah. It me makes too. me happy. Yeah. <laughs> you're not normal if it doesn't. That's exactly right. That's right.